Has the comedy man Chris Boyd finally given up on his bitterness and uh, fell in love with a Celtic player? Anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. Ange Pockstokoglu talks about the fact that the Scottish Cup has been moved from the end of the season, uh, moved time from a three o'clock kickoff. Another defender drops out. Uh, who got injured this week. We talk about Carter Vickers. We also talk about a picture that's been circulating of Ange Postacoglu as a five-year-old boy with a number 24. And then, then we'll get back to the Chris Boyd story because Chris Boyd has kind of fallen in love with a Celtic player, finally. Um, let's jump back to the fact that Ange Postacoglu was interviewed yesterday and he was interviewed by Andrew Milner. I know, Andrew, you're probably watching this video. and uh, I'm going to give you a phone later because if you're getting to interview Ange Postacoglu, Stick around to the end of the video because Celtic fans, I've got a question for you and um, it's all going to be do with you, the channel subscribers and watchers and, and Postacoglu. Anyway, back to the Scottish Cup. Postacoglu went on to say, the Celtic manager says, I am a traditionalist in a lot of way that things should be in football. He says, I love them because they, call, they provide a historical context for why it is played on the last day and it's the last game and it's the time that it should be played is three o'clock. He says, I'm not too involved in the logistics for supporters, etc. He says, but Inverness supporter would be a more of a challenge um, if it was an earlier kickoff. But the fact that it's been moved, he says, there's not a things that there's a lot of things I don't th think should be messed about with at football. But at the end of the day, is the decision that we've got to get on with it, and we just make sure that we play our football. Says Ange Postecoglou, and that's what I'm talking about. Now, if you're running a bus to this, it's going to be a fantastic day out. The Scottish Cup, the last game of the season, it's always a good day out anyway. And um, I know a lot of the guys that run buses and still run buses, they'll be ecstatic. And I know Big Simi will be running the buses over from Belfast and um, he'll have a good few overnight trips and day trips set up for that. So it's going to be a brilliant end of the season. It's going to be fantastic. That's half five kickoff. It's going to be 6.30 here. It's going to be utter madness. Um be a few sore heads the next morning for that anyway moving on uh, we'll talk about the injuries obviously the manager was asked about Carter Vickers now there was a lot of comments and uh, that on the Celtic YouTube channel people said that you know that the mundane questions the same crap every week and Ange gets a bit peed off of them and he was asked about how the team is performing if the team goes on to do the treble this year how can Celtic progress um, next season, how can they get better? And I mean, his answer was right. He says, the fact that the players, we always aim to get better. He says, if we do not get better, if we stand still, if we keep the process just the same, and if we do not, and you know, it comes back to that Japanese thing, Kaizen, continuous improvement. And then that's what's in the manager's head. And the, the fact that the team has to continuously improve, the team has to get better, the team has to perform at higher levels. He says, if we don't, we can be overtaken. He says, and that just, that's, in any domestic league around the world, if you stand still, you will be overtaken. And he plans to be around to make sure that Celtic has this progression and get better. Not only in the league, but in the Champions League. Anyway, with Stephen Walsh on the injury list and Carter Vickers, he was asked about Carter Vickers. And it was good to hear that he says that Carter Vickers will be back for the start of the season. He didn't say too much with to see if he'll be involved in the pre-season training. He just says that he'll be back for the start of the season. He says the operation went well. Another news, Stephen Welsh picked up a knock in training this week and will miss the match this weekend. James Forrest is a week away. They forgot. Where? Wait a minute. There's a player that hasn't been mentioned. And uh, I think we all know who we're talking about. And he's Scottish. And he's been missing in action all season. I mean, is, uh, was it... What, uh, I'm not even going to talk about him because he's on a four-year deal or something, five-year deal, and it's just bizarre. It's bizarre. Anyway, moving on. Ange Postacoglu was reacting to a picture, a photograph of him, um, and as the Immigrants Welcome logo is blazed all over the walls in Celtic Park, and the Green Brigade have a banner with Immigrants Welcome, it was good to hear Ange Postacoglu talk about the picture that's appeared with him as a five-year-old boy with the number 24, as his immigration number, and I'm sure that number will end up in a TIFO somewhere at some point. And it was quite poignant. Um, Five-year-old Ange Postacoglu arriving in Australia holding his immigration number. Ange Postacoglu was asked about it and he says, I was born in Greece. I am very proud of that, he said. I grew up in Australia. I am very proud of that also. More importantly, 
uh, that the Celtic manager and Poster Coglu went on to say, he said, I have tried to make a contribution wherever I have been. My family and myself were given an opportunity in a new country to start a new life. That is the 1970s. And um, it just goes to show you, I can remember, I can't remember all that time ago, he says, but I have the memories. I love seeing these photographs, they have a million memories for me. I often see pictures today of young immigrant children arriving. Very, very similar types of photos and you understand what they're going through. It tugs at you as a human being. And I think that is very poignant for the manager to say that as an immigrant. And obviously I'm an immigrant here. Um, you know, there's lots of immigrants around the world and this nonsense that people just move to, people don't move to other countries to claim benefits you know you can stick that nonsense up your ass they're moving because there's something fundamentally wrong in the country that they're in and the poverty in that country is probably one of the main reasons there's loads of other reasons we're not going to go into it on this channel just now because it's, it's i could talk for about an hour two hours three hours for the, on this subject alone anyway the, the, the celtic manager did go into say he says uh, the story of many immigrants. I'm not alone, said the Celtic manager. This is a snapshot of humanity, simply in one image. We are a family who had to leave everything behind and arrive in a new country. Uh, all those sacrifices that my parents made, says, and what I've tried to do is honour them. It says there's a story there which a lot of people can relate to. Being an immigrant, people being displaced, you can still contribute to an add to any nation that adopts you. I think I've done that in every country I have been. And obviously because he's managed in quite a few countries now, he's, um, he's been adopted as in Japan, he's now been adopted in Scotland and he was adopted in Australia. He says it's modern day immigrants are not so well received, but it does not appear to be lost on the Celtic manager, um, everything about immigration. And on that note, let's get so on, uh, uh, Tom, uh, Chris Boyd. Chris Boyd is actually starting to get a bit humble pie. Or maybe because it's the end of the season and he knows his club's going to win absolutely nada. He says, but he has actually spoke about the fact that the end of season awards will be dominated by Celtic players, and rightly so. He says he'll be staggered if Callum McGregor and Rio Hattie don't feature on the players' shortlist. He says, but um, you've also got to look at Kevin Van Veen, Lauren Shankland to be recognised for their goal scoring feats at Motherwell and Hearts. But the main man this season, as part of the Strikers Union, you've got to feel for Chris Boyd. He must be, he's probably calmed down a bit. Um, and he's, he said he's a little bit biased to admit that the Japanese hitman has been nothing short of phenomenal over the past 10 months. He says he's got the knack of scoring important goals at important times and Kiwo is what makes a difference in a tight game. Kiwo is on 29 goals at the moment and Chris Boy says I fully expect him to score a few more between now and the final game of the season. Every time he's on the pitch you can see the terror in the faces of defenders <laughs> up against them. <laughs> Bizarrely, um, Chris Boyd has had a knack of um, slating everything Celtic all season, trying to put everything Celtic down this season, but when it comes to it, at the end of the season, he's shown a bit of keel goal love. He says, arranging to, uh, then he had to have a sort of a bit of a dig, he went on to say that Rangers in an attacking sense have simply not contributed enough this term, whereas across the city has been a completely different story. Last season we, a lot of, we got a little bit of a glimpse with Kyogo, and obviously you remember that Kyogo went out injured last season um, just before Christmas, um, that little niggling injury and we made sure he was back fit for this season, he's been playing fantastic. Now, talking about end of season, I noticed yesterday on the Celtic channel that the one and only Andrew Milne was um, interviewing, Andrew runs a podcast, you probably know Andrew, but he does a lot of Celtic nights also and he's also out here He's got a place out here, not far from me actually. Um, so Andrew, I will be calling you. I'm going to put this one out to the fans. I want to do an interview with Andrew Postacoglu. I want to get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of the season, first of all. And then I want to put out, I'm going to do a community tab question where I want you as fans to put the question that you would most like to ask Andrew Postacoglu if you had the chance. And I'm going to put this to John Paul Taylor and the guys at the media team. And I'm going to pick out the best, say 15, 20 questions and then we'll put the questions on a poll on the community tab and the one the top five that gets the most votes 
we'll put them forward to Celtic and we'll see that this is it's a, this is the one Celtic fans view. I want you as a Celtic fan to have your view and ask Ange Postacoglu a question. Somebody will probably come along and steal the idea and do it before me, but I can only put it to Celtic and I put it to JP and I'm going to phone Andrew in a couple of hours. I'll let him get out of his bed because he was probably working late last night. Um, so yes, look out for the community tab on Monday. We'll probably put that out there and then we'll get the questions collated and then we'll do a poll for the top five questions that we'll put forward to Celtic as Celtic fans ask Ange Postacoglu and I'm probably going to do it for the end of the season or just after the end of the season I'll let the business end get done first and then we'll see if we can get an interview with Ange before the break off on holiday so I hope that's cheered you up a bit let's get the, the channel to 10,000 subscribers and then let's get these questions and we'll put them forward to Celtic and we'll get Ange interviews on the channel how good would that be? have a great day Celtic fans all around the world Let roll up to the party, roll up, roll up.